Good evening. So, I've just got this cool package come in. Uh, it's ready for the DPM track days that we're doing this year with the Lotus Elise. Um, so you'll see me, a video of me picking that up. It's no first vlog of my 2017. That's what I'm going to do in the track days in, the Lotus Elise. But apart from that, as well as the coaching with myself, uh, I'm also going to be using a VBOX HD2, the latest offering from RaceLogic, um, who, off, who put out data logging software, data logging uh, hardware, uh, and I've got my hands on the latest bit of kit. So I thought, uh, as not on the done before, I thought I'd do a quick unboxing video in regards to what you get with the product itself. So here it is, it's come in the mail. Uh, there was an outer box to this, which obviously for a little bit more extra protection, uh, which I've since removed. Um, so yeah, we'll get into it, start unwrapping it. As we open up the first box, a bit like past the parcel, get rid of that. First box we have here is the packaging box itself. So please state VBOX HD2, dual camera system. This is the 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second uh, software, um, well, software and hardware. That's what they have at the moment. Uh, I have heard that they have an upgrade coming out, which is going to be up to 60 uh, frames per second. So it'll make the, the, the video even clearer, even crisper. So uh, look out for the firmware for that. <coughs> On the back, there's a couple of extras that you can obviously buy uh, with the with the, the, the data logger itself. The lap timer, even OLED or the actual lap timer itself. Lap timer is quite cool because it's got obviously uh, LEDs built into it. So as well as you can visually see whether you're up or down in terms of your time, which is one of the big things for V-boxes is the predictive lap timer. They have uh, colored LEDs, so red for you're going slower than your uh, best lap or previous best lap, uh, and green, which is obviously your um, you're going quicker than your best app as well. Uh, wireless remote as well, which is obviously quite cool if the, the V-Box isn't that um, accessible. You've packed it away, down and away, keep the weight, uh, the centre of gravity low in your race car, then uh, the, the, the remote's going to help you, help you out as well. And then a couple of photos as well, uh, just showing the clarity of the box itself. So it's not the best light to see that, so I'm not going to show you that uh, too much. So yeah, we'll uh, open this up. Really good packaging actually. I do like the box. <coughs> get rid of the knife. It's been relatively tame to get in, into the box so far. Right, so that's the box. Now let's see, we'll get rid of that. So, the packaging. And then we have the contents list. So just the dispatch receipt, etc., etc. Effectively, the checklist um, that the company will put together for this to leave the VBOX factory. So it's got the serial unit numbers, who it's been tested by, etc., 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 and everything else that's in there. <coughs> so that's actually not a bad little list for me to go through. Um, cool little um, memory card here. We've got 32 gig memory cards. Normally I thought they only came with 16, but they've obviously gone up in the world. Quality Samsung SD card here that you can see, and probably just as useful as a nice SD card holder as well. So that you don't lose it, and it also protects the SD card when it's not in use. First thing that comes out is the actual VBOX unit itself. So this is the data logger. This is uh, what records all the information. <coughs> this is where the SD card goes in, just here. So there's a sort of rubber, a rubber... Uh, bung that almost goes in, it's just pivots from the box itself in which you can um, seal up the SD card. So, uh, I don't quote on this, but it's, I'm not sure if it's waterproof or not, but I'm sure that probably helps and keeps it um, from being affected by the water at all. Got a record button on the front, you can manually override um, the, the box to make it start recording. Otherwise, it will start recording over fifth, um, five kilometers an hour or whatever you spec it as. It's also Wi-Fi enabled as well and uh, Bluetooth enabled. So I know I've done this with previous models where, uh, well, I've seen actually Julian Thomas, where I've raced with him in the past when he's been testing out the HD2 model is he uh, connects his phone to the, the HD2 unit and then you get a live output of what the 
what the camera systems can see so that you can position the cameras properly. It's not designed for uh, going around on circuit and having a, effectively a live feed in the car. It's all about setting the, the cameras up so you can get the most out of that. So, yeah, that's sort of it's pretty light. It's made of aluminium, a uh, bit of plastic on the sides as well, but um, comes really well prepared, looks really neat, really smart. You've got all your inputs just at the back of the box just there as well. Um, so, yeah, that's good. It's probably half kilo or so, something like that. Let's give you an idea of the weight itself. Other side of the box here, <coughs> we have our camera system. So that's all packaged up in um, in the bags just here. So one camera and two camera. Another good thing about obviously the V boxes is you can have one camera looking out the front of the car, one camera looking back at the car, and then I'll show you a little bit later in some example footage of it. But you can let the software overlays them both at the same time. So um, everything's matched up real time, o laid over one another so you can really see what inputs you're making and then what outputs that has out on the circuit, whether you're turning in too early, too aggressive or anything like that, and that's what makes it such a useful uh, piece of software. So this one uh, I expect to have a cigarette lighter, so that's useful for any road car. Not that useful for a, a race car, I must admit. So, um, but there is a battery option that you can get from the um, from VBox themselves, um, which is just a lightweight battery which will power the the VBox H2 for a whole day's worth of testing. Uh, so it wouldn't do 24 hours, for example, but it would do whatever. You, if you do a couple of hours out on circuit, it will it will last for that long. Uh, so that's just your standard cigarette lighter. Uh, these are quite cool. These are a new addition, I believe. It's, well, I think since the HD2 came out to match the, the snazzy anodized blue of the VBox unit itself, is these much, much more robust camera mounts. So, this particular uh, model, we've gone for the suction cup mounts. There is an option to have roll bar mounts as well. Um, so, depending on whether you've got a race car or a road car, I know that the race cars they want the the camera is much, much more secure than just suction cup mounts, so that's why you would go for the <clears throat> roll cage mounts over the suction cup mounts themselves. But yeah, they come out, they come out really, they look really nice, uh, really nice finish to them. And for a road car, for a track day car, these suction cups are, are more than enough, uh, and especially when they're tethered using the, the wiring from the cameras as well to the box. Those, those things aren't going to go anywhere in case of a crash or anything like that, which I know a lot of the um, track day providers mention in their briefings these days is having these cameras have a second tether, uh, which the, the wiring doubles up as. <clears throat> two mounts for two cameras. Um, and then in this box here, we've just well, in this packet here, we've just got the camera holders, as it were. So if you undo that, you can screw that on to the mount just here. And then if I were to take out, I don't, I'll take it out in a second and, and fit them all up. And you just use a nice rubber bungee which secures it onto the bung like that, onto the mount like that, and that isn't going anywhere. Just make sure that your, your camera is listed um, top, and it's facing the top, otherwise you're going to get an upside down footage, but obviously the Wi-Fi uh, enablement with the data logger, will be able to spot, you'll be able to spot that before you go out on the circuit. Microphone, again microphone, you can mount that, there's a nice long lead on that so you can mount that most places in the cabin with relative ease so whether you want to mount it a little bit further back to hear your mid-engine um, engine sing or if you want to mount it behind the passenger seat so you can capture all of your uh, instructors um, inputs if you're having coaching at all or all of your uh, guest screens if you're giving them hop rides and doing drifting and sliding around and scaring and etc etc and then the final bit in the box here is just the GPS antenna so um, you mount that in clear sight of the sky, so whether that be in the very front of the dashboard looking up um, or whether you mount it outside the car on the roof, uh, it is recommended that you put a tin foil or a, a metal um, underlay, so whether that be bodywork, whether that be a piece of tin foil <laughs> if you've got a glass fibre uh, roof, which I'm going to have to do with the Lotus, so I've already uh, put that on the car actually is a glass uh, is a bit of tin foil from the kitchen taped over it and then that's what this is going to mount to there's actually um, this is actually magnetic as well so if you are using 
uh, a metal base for um, for bodywork or a roof or something like that on more of a production car, a saloon car, then this will just um, <coughs> um, stick down using using the magnet. It is. <laughs> you, I don't just use the magnet though; it will fall straight off. Make sure you back that up with tape, uh, especially if it's on the outside of the car. If it's on the inside of the car, I'm sure the magnet will be more than enough to stop it from falling off. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much everything. So that's everything that comes in the box. So now we will go and uh, put this all together. Get rid of all that packaging. So here's the box itself. First of all, we're going to mount the cameras to the mounts themselves. So get rid of that. So mount just here, as already shown. That screws on like so. Get that nice and tight, and then we can just loosen it at the side here. And then this is just on a ball joint that uh, turns 360 like so, and then turns 90 degrees like this. But this then allows pretty much 360. Uh, configuration so that you can um, mount the cameras however you wish. Camera here itself, I'm not going to unwind it, I'm going to, I'm fitting it to a car tomorrow so I won't bother unwinding it just yet. So you take the elastic pads just here, stretch it round the camera and clip it back on to the opposite side of the pad, make sure that's all seated correctly, make sure it's facing up and then that is your camera all mounted just there. Going to do the same for this one as well. <coughs> Pop that in. So that's two cameras now that's sorted. Pop them out of the way. And then connecting everything to the, the box couldn't be simpler. The hardest bit is placing it um, and is, is securing it for all of the different types of car that you might be using it in or fitting it into. So um, all of the all of the inputs are clearly marked on the box themselves. So you can just about see underneath there, sort of CAM1, CAM2, power, mic, uh, GPS, and I think there's a CAM input as well, which is obviously also, pos uh, also possible, so you can see your throttle inputs, revs, etc, etc, which just adds to the amount of data and input that this logger can produce. So, GPS unit, screws into the gold one just on the end here. Uh, I'm going to use my power adapter, so the opposite end of the power. Um, there's just a little red dot on the very top of the input here, so we're going to pop that in like so. Microphone, again that pops in next to the GPS antenna, it's just on the opposite side. So that just clips in like so, very easy. And then we have camera one, which pops in one side, camera two pops in the other side <coughs> like so and then don't forget to put your memory card back in pop that out of case and then pop that inside at the front here and then as soon as I have a power source for my GPS, well for, for the unit in the form of a a uh, cigarette lighter is good to go. It's literally as simple as that, and that is another one of the benefits for using Race Logic is you can it can alternate car to car, which is why I use it. I'm going to be using it in my Lotus Elise for my coaching days that I'm going to be doing, but I'm also going to use it for all the coaching I do in other people's race cars, other people's track day cars, etc., etc., etc. I've even put it in my BMW when I went to Tesco's once, and then turned around, did it again, came back home, and overlaid the data. So <laughs> it's uh, the the possibilities are endless. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. I'll definitely pop some um, footage at the end of it, and I'll quickly go through the online software that you get with the um, that you get actually on the SD card. So um, the analysis software that you use on your laptop, for example, um, you get everything on the SD card. You can plug it straight into your laptop and um, see that very very easily. So just get that all set up. So this is the opening screen you get from opening up the circuit tool software once you're on there. Um, so you get the option to open a file directly from a SD card, from the hard drive of your computer or whatever. Uh, you then get this very handy feature that copies all VBOX recognized files from an SD card onto the hard drive in a, uh, in a file location that you would determine. 
um, so where you want it saved and also what you would like it to be called as well. So that's a definitely handy function for it. Uh, quick start guide, so if you need a uh, sort of guide for the software itself and then the entire software guide listed just there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, or you can just close it in the top right hand side which opens up a blank version of the circuit tool. So we're going to go for that straight away. Uh, we're going to put it over onto the default uh, setting just here. Um, and then just briefly go through the software. So on the left hand side here, actually it's better if we load in a lap. So if I just go and find one of those quickly. <clears throat> Fire this all up. And then we've got a file just here. So it's, v it's named vbox001. Um, dot VBO, so that's obviously the VBOX file there. Uh, but the cool thing is they're all listed the same, so you get VBOX 0002, etc., etc., etc. So it can be quite d difficult to determine which one's which. However, the software can determine which is your fastest lap or the length of the session, how many laps you did in that session, and the fastest lap from that session, and the circuit that obviously that. Uh, file was then taken so it's uh, very useful in that respect for picking through the file so you know exactly which one you want to open without having to rename them all you also have a little auto play preview which actually uh, starts playing the video file obviously in a very low res format with a little bit of sound in the bottom right hand side so again you can work out for example if you have two driver formats uh, you can work out who's in the seat at, it, at each um, <coughs> at each per, uh, each part so you can again load in the correct file. Yeah, you can edit this. Um, so if we select this, we can change the circuit for change the weather, add some notes, add the car, etc. Again, everything you would need for determine well, storing information for each session that you do. Uh, you can rename the file. So what we can't see is there's actually a, v, a .vbo file, but also a .avi file, which is the actual video file in itself. So we can't see that, but if I were to go into File Manager, I would actually see both of those files. When I click Rename, the software will rename both files what I renamed this v, .vbo file. So again, it's a very useful tool. Um, otherwise, if you rename it in File Manager, um, the software won't then pick up what the Re, what the old name is for the video file therefore it won't open the video file so just be aware of that if you have any issues at all then obviously delete uh, sometimes you can uh, it starts recording obviously when you obviously the vbox is recording once you go from your pit box to the end of the pit lane and if there's a red light or whatever and you only get a 20 second long file you can then have the option to delete that using the delete item just here i'm just going to double click on this vbo file which is then going to boot this all into life and then just to briefly show you what the software then shows we've got our lap count on the left hand side here so it shows the number of laps what lap time i did uh, and then the delta, so how quick, fast, how much faster or slower each of my laps were. Uh, I currently have my fastest lap set as, a, set as a datum, this is standard. And then if I just open this box out, we then have nine generated sectors from the Barcelona circuit here, um, which is normally split from sort of corner to corner, um, or straight to straight, and any combination of corners in between those will be then determined as a sector effectively. So then you can work out where you've been faster and slower in each of those laps. Um, we then look at, you can then see the ideal lap time, so how much faster you would be if you put all of your sectors together, and then that lists your actual fastest lap time. So then if I shrink this left-hand side back down again, we then have um, the, the graph in the middle here. So this is showing the speed around the Barcelona circuit. And then if I were to select another lap time, the delta time, so uh, how much faster or slower I would be at certain points on the lap. We then have all sorts, which is recorded by the data logger. We have the lateral G, so the side to side G, so you can see uh, where your turning points are, how aggressive you're turning, how aggressively you're turning, etc., etc. Longitudinal um, G force, so how hard you're braking, when you're braking, etc., etc. Um, you do have other things like the time, latitude, longitude, heading, height, distance, elapsed time, etc, etc. But those are the four main channels that I would use when sort of comparing data, etc. Um, for just the basic setup that we have for the VBOX2 HD um, with the two, the two cameras and the GPS plot, the um, power, 
mic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Obviously, when you then start plugging into the cans, you can get so much more information, throttle position, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this V box could essentially replace one of your already full-on data logging softwares that's plugged into the car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so on the left-hand side here, I can then select more than one lap at a time. So just on the show column here, I've clicked lap number three here. This then populates with two videos showing side by side, and then it shows my um, the graphs just here. So let me just set this. So if I go up to uh, this slightly unaligned, so I need to go to graph, and it's, I'm currently on x-axis as time, which is not very useful for when, com when comparing uh, two laps. We can normally do, <clears throat> normally do it by distance because normal data loggers run off of a wheel sensor. Um, so it's obviously measuring the distance at all times. But if you get a lock up um, or spin up the wheels or anything like that, then that sets that distance um, in, incorrectly effectively. But because we're using a GPS to uh, track our speed, location, etc., I click on position, then this gives us a um, much, much more accurate reading of where and faster and slower on the circuit when comparing the, the red and the blue lines just here. So then we can start to look at um, the, the, the video side by side as I start to click through the lap itself you can see the pictures are actually uh, aligning to where I am clicking on the map itself and if I press space just here then they both play at the same time as well so again I can start to see the differences between the two laps I'm comparing with the sound etc. Something that most data loggers don't have is, is the functionality to effectively link up the video with the data plots them, themselves. So uh, again, another very strong point that the VBOX has over, over some of the other data loggers out on the market at the moment. So, uh, and then I can also click drag and hold and then I'm selecting just these two lines in the middle here then I start to zoom in on this again everything updates to show the two diff the differences between the two uh, laps here and shrinks it all down the delta even gets reset for that that section that I'm looking at so over these two corners uh, I can see that I gained seven tenths uh, of one lap over the other uh, but then if I click and drag the opposite way then zooms out the whole map again and I can see that I actually lost 2.6 seconds over these two laps so that delta is then condensed down to the area that you particularly select so yeah that's a very whistle stop tour of the software itself check out the VBOX um, soft, um, software website the RaceLogic website um, for much much more in depth and I'm sure much more detail, detailed view of the, the software itself but um, yeah that's everything you get in the uh, the V-Box um, pack, so if you're interested, um, definitely check those things out. Get in touch with myself, uh, as I am a V-Box dealer. Um, I can sort you out and give you the best advice for um, what you're after uh, from your data logger. Thanks for watching. If you find this useful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment for any other videos you may like to see along these lines, maybe a little bit more of a tutorial, etc., etc. Um, and definitely subscribe for more videos to come. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.